Well, first and foremost, how, how's the foot, Chairman? That's the, that's the main question. Yeah, good. Ruptured ligaments. So uh, if I was a player, it'd be 10 weeks. So uh, I'm hoping by the time I get home on Wednesday, I can drive my car back from the airport. But uh, yeah, stupid. Do you know what I mean? I, I stepped off a curb and it was um, cement. The tarmac in the road had melted. So there was a hole in the road I hadn't seen. I went down the hole, went over where Barry was sat in the buggy. So, uh, and then Chats obviously straight away was talking about plates, operations, excuse my language, all sorts of, all sorts, you can bleep that out later, all sorts of things. So they took me to hospital, scan, and uh, ruptured ligaments. So uh, I've done it a few times with my ankles, but I'll, I'll be fine. On the uh, transfer front, obviously we've had some, Australia, we've had some um, players join us this week. First, first of all, we'll start with Michael Doughty, who joined yes. us yesterday. Yes. Um, a player you've been tracking as a club for quite some time. Yes, we've been talking to Michael since May. Um, like I said, you know, our, our fans are probably the usual saying, oh, you know, we haven't had the players we want to get. But we had targets in May. Um, Ricky Miller was a big one. Uh, Danny Lloyd was one. Um, Jack Marriott's been one for 18 months. Um, and um, Michael, basically, we when we did the, we drew up the board in the office, the type of players we wanted, we wanted competition for Chris Forrester. We need Chris to get back to the standards he had before uh, the Chelsea game last year. And we think Michael coming in the building will definitely spur him on and the other young central midfielders we have. So, um, terrific lad. Um, probably the most down-to-earth person you'll talk to. Um, knows his football, very intelligent, accomplished at League One level. We think he can adapt very well. He definitely adds to our quality. Um, he'll definitely add goals and assists. And we think he can play a level higher, which is also important. So, really, really pleased with that one, to be fair. Yeah. Jack Murray, as you said, you've been tracking him for 18 yeah, months. We, Jack was their young player of the season, uh, season before last. He had 22 goals. We actually nearly got him before he went to Luton, but at the time, I think, I can't remember where it was, but we, we had Britt and, and Connor, and we, Jack was one of those we were always looking at. Um, when Connor went, we were looking, for, we were looking at Jack, but they wanted too much money. Um, we went in quite high at the time, and uh, it was, there was no way he was coming to us. Um, obviously, last season, it didn't happen for Mike. He, he wanted, so people are like saying to me, well, he scored 8, 9, 10, 12 goals. He didn't play. He didn't play a lot and he didn't get a run. And the reason we wanted Jack was he ticked all our boxes at Peterborough when we look at bringing a striker in. Um, and he's got a, now he's got a lot of football league experience for a 22-year-old. We feel we can turn him into a one and two striker, if not better. His pace will be massive to the way we're trying to play. We didn't have any pace last year up front. No disrespect to the strikers we had. Um, yeah, Shaq had a bit of pace, but he was in and out of our team. But what Jack's got is he's, he's got pace and he can finish. So, and he is so hungry. I mean, he, believe it or not, took a wage cut to come to us. Jack was on a very, very, very lucrative contract at Luton. Yes, we paid a good fee for him, but Jack, in fairness to him, took a, a cut to come to us because he wants to get his career on track. And for him, football is more important than money. Uh, he's still well paid by us, by the way. Don't think we've you know, got him for, for cheap, but he, we certainly weren't going to pay the wages he was on. Um, bringing him in and he basically is all about football and that to me ambition over greed is everything it says about a player I think we've already seen in this training camp exactly what Ricky Miller is all about in terms of his finishing wow I'm, I'm gutted though we're not going to have him for six games He um, he's put the goalkeepers on their asses a few times hasn't he with his finishing and people can have a go about Ricky that he's not really played in the league and he scored 40 goals in non-league it's, it's basically the fourth division in the football league the national league and Ricky scored 42 goals um, he's 28 he is Vardy like in that he's come late with age we looked at Ricky when he was 24 um, it was decided with, with Darren at the time and his staff when I, I brought him to the table they, they didn't want to take a punt at the time on Ricky I think he was at Boston I've watched him we've tracked him um, he's had issues off the field he's a terrific lad this is his last chance to learn he knows that I think he will be amazing for us and you can see already what a finisher wow how do you track someone like uh, Danny Lloyd? Because obviously he's, he's one that's sort of come under the radar as such. Yeah, no, Danny's been on. Even when he was at Fylde, we looked at Danny. Um, we're always keeping an eye out, particularly with nippy wingers and those type of players, tricky players. Not necessarily strikers, but people who can play forward. And It's very much in the mould of John Taylor. Um, hopefully he's technically a little bit better than John Taylor. Danny's dynamic, he's quick, he wants to score goals, he wants to make goals, he's got a great personality. We spoke rigorously to Jim Gannon, who I respect a lot, about Danny stepping up from the level at Stockport to, to doing it with us. Again, he's, he's no spring chicken, Danny, so he's coming late into the game, into the Football League. But with his character and his ambition and his hunger, I think, uh, I think our fans are going to like Danny a lot. 
the goalkeeping position has been talked about all summer, hasn't it? With Luke McGee, you couldn't leave it too uh, late. But you feel you got the right one in now? We do. Um, we've known about Bondi now for a while. Um, obviously, he's had injury problems. We extensively looked into that before we signed him. That was the only question mark at the time. He he has a lot of attributes. A lot of our players, there were smiles on their faces when he walked into the building. I think there was concern over the goalkeeping position amongst the players, which is always going to be the way in a dressing room. Um, yes, we, we were looking at him and we were looking at the young Newcastle goalkeeper as well. And we're confident with the amount of games he's played and Bondi and, and the clubs he's been at, he's going to be a good addition for us. So looking forward to seeing what he can do. And the younger goalkeeper as well. Um, Josh, yeah. yeah, Josh, bags of potential. Um, great shot stopper, great saver, working on his feet now. Uh, and we think he, he's got he's got a lot of potential, definitely. In terms of the ones going out, obviously Michael Smith's gone yeah. today to Hearts. Michael Smith's gone, we wish him well, great guy. Himself and his wife have been moving up there as family, so um, never did wrong by us. Um, he was he was a really good player for our football club. Just sometimes you move on, you, you know, you look at your squad the following season, you make changes, tough, harsh changes sometimes, and it was probably harsh on Michael. But he's playing now, I think his first game of the season is at Celtic, so, you know, it, it, it's a good move for Michael. Uh, at his age and his stage and I think the Northern Irish coach is there at heart who, who really wanted him so I think it'll be good for his career he'll get more caps from Northern Ireland and uh, we wish him well and it was a good deal for us because it freed up some cap room I speak about cap room because we have you know the financial fair play Michael was on a good contract so they've basically bought him and, and his contract has freed up space for us to do business so that's the whole idea of some of these outgoing players yeah, you've got a lot of players who are at RAF Wittering at the moment those that are on the transfer sure. list is there any movement yeah. on that? you've got Shaq who we're encouraging to to basically, when a club comes in, forget about if they can't meet his contract, go and play football. You're 22 years old, you're on a good contract. Even if another club fall a few hundred short a week, you're still on a very good wage for a 22-year-old young man. And a striker like him has to go and play. Um, otherwise, you're going to basically, you're going to be stuck in no man's land for a period of time. Same for Dal Nabi, same thing. Go and play football, stop worrying about your contract. And other people go, well, I wouldn't give up a few hundred a week. When you're on X amount a week, you would. And if you're getting that, because very few 22-year-olds are on that kind of money. So a few hundred a week's no big deal. Brad Inman did it. He took a, a, a cut to go to Rochdale. Rochdale couldn't meet his full wages. And Brad basically gave up a small percentage to make the deal work because he wants to go and play football. We think Keith Hill will get a lot out of him this season. And Brad will come back to us as a valuable asset, we feel, by the end of the season. Um, Maddie Stevens is training with the League Two club. He goes there tomorrow hopefully with a with a, a loan that will be arranged. Um, who else have we got? We've got Luke James, obviously. Um, we've had uh, bids turned down from Bristol Rovers for Luke and Tom Nichols. So they want to bring Luke in there. There's another club in League Two that wants Luke. So we're hoping he gets fixed up soon as well. Um, who else am I missing? Anyone else? Jordan Nicholson, obviously. We've had clubs in the conference and Nuneaton wanted to take him, but Jordan thinks he can play in the league. We'll see how that progresses. Again, I would advise Jordan he needs to play football. So... Um, you know the best option that comes along you must take it um, because otherwise again there's no point in playing under 21 football it's not what you want to do have I missed anyone? Not that I can think of but Barry's obviously trying to get those, those players out how key is that to do that as quickly as it's possible? It's important because you don't want too many people hanging around the training ground and you don't want people who aren't involved hanging around the training ground as well um, it's not a slight on their character but they can be negative and, and they're not playing football and they're not involved and it brings down other people so not to mention they take up uh, cap room on the wages so again you know business has to be done we've brought players in and we've brought players in on good contracts and we have to move players on so there there is no there is no way back in for people like Shaq uh, Jordan um, uh, Naby uh, Matty Stevens and uh, Luke James there is no room we filled up those slots in the squad so they have to move on one way or another You've got four strikers at the moment. Is that what yes. you're looking at? Or are you looking to manoeuvre those around a bit? No, we're looking at four. We always wanted four. We felt last year it was a, as bad as the season was. We fell four wins short of the playoffs. And I think the 11 points that we finished short of sixth, I think we lost against the bottom four teams in the league. So as bad as the season was and our fans think and everyone else was unhappy about it and finished in 11th, we did that falling four wins short with one striker and double figures, which has never happened in the 10 years I've owned the club. So it didn't take Stevie Wonder to figure out what was the issue for us in certain areas last year. Up front was an issue. Um, there was too many partnerships that were played, too many strikers, too much rotation. Um, nobody got hot. Nobody went on a run. Tom hinted he was going to do it, and then he took his foot off the pedal. He should have had 25 goals, Tom Nichols, last year. He knows that himself, but nobody backed him up either. Nobody else got close. So what have we got this year? We've got Ricky Miller coming off 40-odd goals. We've got Jack Marriott, who scored a lot of goals in League Two. 
we've got uh, Junior Moranis, who is a new signing. Forget the Junior you saw before. This model and addition that's come in the building, as you can see in training, is a different animal altogether. He spent six, seven weeks losing a massive amount of weight, taking his body fat down from 19% to 10, 11%. He now looks like a professional footballer because you could hear the jeers in the stands before and that's something we spoke about to him at the end of the season and he's taken the bat and he's done it off his own back and he's got himself fit and he looks dynamite out there. He's quicker, he's stronger, he's more dynamic, he'll feel it himself. So he's like a new signing. Um, and now Tom Nichols has got these three strikers next to him and he knows he was brought in to score goals and do the business. He knows the talent he has. He knows the ability he has. He's got to step up and score. If somebody comes in for one of the strikers, and we moved one on or sold one for a fee, of course we'd go and get another one as well. So that's where we are in the strike department. We're very happy where we are now. Could it change? Quite possibly. You said on Twitter before we came out here about Jermaine Anderson yeah. sitting down. Are you, are you any closer with that one or are you just letting him Jermaine get on with it? avoiding me. He keeps running, but that might be just the fitness he's doing on the pitch. You've got a buggy though, Chairman. Yeah, I've got a buggy. I was chasing him around down there. Yes, I'll speak to Jermaine. He is looking in great nick uh, physically. He's in good shape. Mentally, he's in good shape. I'll sit down with him and explain to him that we're putting a lot of time and energy into him and his career. And if we're going to continue doing that, he needs to pay the football club back. We offered him a contract that was £100 less than he was on last year, um, but with better incentives. His agent wanted three and a half times more money per week. So people who were saying, well, I wouldn't sign one that was £100 less. Well, you would if there was a question mark on your career and you've only got nine months left. We were offering him a two, three year deal to give him security and peace of mind. So if you were in that position, trust me, you would snap our hands off. So I would say to Jermaine, advise him one more time to sign a contract because for the club to invest this time and energy into him and encourage him into the first team when he's back in September, um, he needs to be contracted to our club long term. And I think he needs to pay us back like Jack Baldwin did. Um, so that's a conversation I will have directly with him. We've had, um, obviously, bids for other players. Um, we've turned down multiple bids for Michael Boswick. Um, we've turned down bids for, obviously, Marcus Madison. We've turned bids down for, who else is there? Is there anyone else on the list? No, we, we had a bid today um, from a championship club for Jack Baldwin. We turned that down as well. Uh, he's our captain, and we're very happy with that. And um, that's where it is, really, in the market, you know what I mean? And, and, and obviously, we're still interested in players. We still have options out there. And if Bozzy goes, Marcus goes, we will make moves when necessary. But right now, if we were to start the season tomorrow, we're okay. We're good. Touch wood. If you're going to put a pound on at this moment in time, you, you would assume that Michael Boswick probably wouldn't be here at the start of the season, given, given where we are at the stage. Yeah, correct. And, and, and to be fair to Bozzy, look, Bozzy would sign a new contract probably tomorrow and whatever else, but we can't offer him a good contract. And... and you know, we're not in a position to offer him a good contract. And I think he's been with us a good amount of time. And I think his next contract will be his best one in football. So what we said to him and what we still say to him is, let's test the market and see what's out there. We get a fee. We free up some cap space to go and get someone else. Michael will get a, will get a move where he'll probably earn three to four times more money per week. That's good for his family and it's good for him. But we're not alienating Michael. He's with us. He's part of the group. He's a great lad. And we would never do that to Michael. So, But there are some good clubs coming in and some good clubs sniffing around them and making bids we, you know Blackburn obviously have come in and we turned down a couple of bids from them they would pay him substantially more wages than we would so at 28 29 it's a great move for Michael so if Michael goes or if and when we have other targets to possibly bring in there Marcus Madison it must be hard when you obviously like a player as much as you yeah. do to to know what to do business wise whether to keep him or, or have a look and see where the market is yeah. is that is that something you wrestle with every day depending on what big comes all, in all the time Marcus is the best player in league one and uh, he's better than Bradley Dak now to suspect of Bradley Dak you saw the statistics all the time statistics don't lie some managers and some people will moan about the way Marcus dives and the way Marcus play acts and all of that when I buy a player, I'm not interested in the play act, and I'm interested in can he make goals or score goals in his position. He's the best attacking midfielder outside of the championship. And, of course, he has a price. In saying that, I'm very happy, and I said to Marcus this morning, listen, if we have to, let's play this year out and let me come to you with a very good contract when we're back in the championship next May. And then you just stay at Peterborough, because why would you need to move? You know, we can do what we did with George Boyd. Not that much, but we can go to a level where we can keep him for a while. So... If necessary, and I don't get what I need, and so far it hasn't been to that level, um, I'm very happy to sit on that one. We'll move other players around and other players out, and we will keep the best player in League One. Because what Marcus Madison now has, last year he created nearly 20 goals with a strike force with one striker that got 10 goals. Yeah, no pace. 
This year, Marcus Madison is going to have four strikers chomping at the bit, pace, who will score goals, and lots of goals. So I would imagine he could smash the assist record in League One if he stayed. And if the clubs in the championship who are looking and looking and not quite moving are stupid enough not to make a bid, not to go out and get the best player in League One, well, that's on them. But let me tell you right now, I am his biggest fan. It's not a monetary thing. It's because I know the quality he possesses. His statistics are better than Boydie's and they're better than Lee Tomlin's. And they're players I loved and brought to the football club. So, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. We've got eight weeks. But Marcus has come back. He's in terrific condition. Um, the best he's ever been in a preseason. So he's really, I think, at 23, and people forget he's 23. The penny's dropping, and he's now doing all the right things off the pitch, and he's ready to move his career on to the next level. So it's exciting. I, I, I think, and I, people say I say it every year, I didn't hype us last year or say it last year, but I'm, I'm encouraged by what I see. And, and yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. You know, preseason's all about looking at players. You, sure. You've got a player out here at the moment in, in a certain position. Yes. You're going to do the same again, I, I think, I guess, next week. Is that just to yeah. see the close quarters, I guess? Yeah, you've got agents all the time who put players into us. And some players we know, some we don't. And what we'll say to them sometimes is, look, put them on the plane and send them out to us. And sometimes the agent will go, no, give them a contract. No, we're not doing that. We've done that before. We've rushed in. We made mistakes. We signed some fullbacks last summer we shouldn't have signed. We, we, we rushed in foolishly. The market's such is that we'll take our time. We're having a look at a fullback at the moment. It's up to the manager. He's not knocking my door down to sign him yet. That's up to the player. We've got a very, very good young player coming in from the Premier League that we've done a deal with a Premier League club and potentially to sign on Wednesday, who again is a fullback. Um, and, and again we'll have a quick look at him and, and if we decide to pursue it we'll sign him so look at the moment I think the manager's playing with the old 3-5-2 or he calls it a what does he call it a 3-4-2-1 is that too many numbers? too much mathematics for me to be honest I think they're my right there 3-4-2-1 yes so, uh, you can try and sneak an extra sorry, player on 3-4-1-2 yes. he calls it I call it a 3-5-2 and as we saw Leo is obviously the right wing back Guillaume was the left wing back and what we're seeing out here Leo against Bristol Rovers, obviously, he's played in the formation three times and scored two goals. Um, we think Guion and that side coming in, again, can score a lot of goals. And they're not really full backs. They're playing more like proper wingers up there. So that's where it is at the moment. But it, should we change to a 4-4-2 during the season, or, or whether it's a 3-5-2 or 4-4-2, we're going to need an orthodox right back, you know, because Leo's not a right back, nor is Harry Anderson. It'd be unfair for them to play a right back role. So, of course, we're looking at right backs. We've got one here. We've got one coming in on Wednesday. We're looking to strengthen in all areas when the right one comes up. We've made bids for other players in other areas that were turned down, obviously. Um, we didn't lose any sleep about it. We haven't rushed in. I think we've been accused in the past of, of bringing in quantity and not enough quality. And we feel the ones we've brought in are the, are the right ones. You know. Harry Anderson's obviously with us at this moment yes. in time. Spent time on loan at Lincoln. Where is he at this moment? We made an insulting bid for Harry. Um, it wasn't a good bid. Um, Harry helped get them up. I think Lincoln offered us 30 grand or 40 grand. So, um, no way. He, you know, if Lincoln were, were willing to pay what the going rate for a 19, 20 year old winger, you know, who scored the goals and came off the bench and helped them get promoted, of course we consider it because we wouldn't want to stand in Harry's way. But we're comfortable Harry being with us. We have league clubs who want to take Harry on loan. That could happen. Harry could be dynamite in pre season games and he could force his way in as well. So we're okay with that. Harry's on a two year deal. Um, we think he's got bags of potential, but for a club to offer us 30 grand or whatever else, well, that's just insulting, so we'll leave it there, you know. David Oldfield has come in, obviously, at the back end of last season, had yeah. a bit of a look, yeah. obviously signed the deal in the summer, and he, he's got a very authoritative figure, hasn't he? David's great, and he has the words you just used there as authority. You know, the training ground last year to this year, with the coaches doing their work, wow, you can hear David, and I think the players can hear David as well. He knows his stuff, he's a promotion winner, um, he did the business with Jimmy Floyd, he's been at Burton a long time, he was... He was paramount to a lot of their success going up from League 2 and League 1 to the Championship. Didn't work out at QPR, he wasn't there long. Um, I know him from a long time ago, he's one for one as a manager for me. I think he's brilliant for Grant, I think he'll give him the support he needs. I think he'll be the bad cop when Grant needs to be the good cop with the players. Um, yeah, David's going to be a brilliant addition, he's probably one of the most important signings in the summer to be fair. Is this the time of the year that you do really get excited about the campaign? I mean, I, I guess during the season when, you, when you're over, you get to see as many games as yeah, you can. I, but I, I, I'm, I'm excited to start playing again. I can't wait for Plymouth um, because it's a long summer, you know, and obviously the season ended and 11th wasn't where we wanted to be. I'm excited to get going again. Um, Pre-season games are okay, but they're never really... You could win them all 10-0, 10-0, 10-0. You could lose them all 10-0. It doesn't really say much because I remember with the season we went up to the championship, we were crap. 
in pre-season. I mean, crap. We struggled to beat Gillian and we were, you know, we were awful. I remember it and Fergie was going mad and, uh, and I wasn't happy with what I saw. But we had a good season in the championship. So you can't take it serious. It doesn't matter what the results are. You know, you can beat championship teams and you could get hammered by non-league teams. It is what it is. It's for the minutes in the tank. It's to explore your options and the formations. It's to get the players to get to know each other. You can see it now by the pool. I think we've eliminated the clicks here. We had too many clicks last year. You see that with some of the players that left and, and the way they acted on Twitter and some of the comments on Twitter and everything else and the ones who retweeted it. It was just too much of a click atmosphere. And a lot of those who weren't picked are in the team. They created an atmosphere. We got rid of that. We didn't want those characters at the club. So that was important to move people like that on. And, and I think it's important the 18 to 22 players we have are together and they're with each other, whether they're in the team, not in the team. The goal is the same for everyone. The goal is win the league, get promoted, get back to the championship and do it playing good football, score lots of goals. That's that's what we want. And, and I've got my targets for this season. And hype or no hype, they're big targets. Just talk about the Checker Trade Trophy, if I can. Obviously, for previous winners of the tournament, there's four yeah. new teams coming in um, for the new year. There's a lot of been talked during this summer, what's going to happen with the Checker Trade. I guess everybody's got an opinion. What's yours at this moment in time? I, I'm delighted we still have this trophy. We won it. Um, it was a great day out for everyone at the club. Great day out for our fans. I think ask Coventry what they think. I think it gave them momentum for even though they were relegated to optimism to come back up. I think the money is very important for clubs like us. I think Oxford made about a million quid two years in a row getting there. Um, I have told the, the manager and I'll tell the players tomorrow because I'm, I'm doing a, a presentation and a chat with the players tomorrow night that for me, I want the double. I do. I want to win the league and I want to win the checker trade. And, and I get all of the uh, controversy surrounding the trophy and there's been things that have been done wrong and some of the deals and whatever. Those teams are good additions. I'm hoping they'll be good additions. We'll put it at a fair price. We'll make it affordable for people to come and see. I love football, so I want more games. So the fact we've got group games, um, and it's more football for me. When you own a club and you pay all this money, you want to see the more football you can get. So that means either you get lucky and go through later rounds in the cup, or with a cup like this, you're guaranteed three more games. Um, the money is better, that's fine. I'm not selling my soul out. At the end of the day, I want my team to succeed and win trophies. And, and a, an opportunity to go to Wembley can't be sniffed at. So it's not perfect, but I, I didn't want us to lose it. How pleased are you not to be at Rochdale away on the opening day of the season? Yeah, listen, I, I mean, I would have been happy to have Rochdale at home, you know what I mean? And, 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 you know, because it's obviously us and Rochdale have had three years in a row we've played each other. So, um, look, you know, I think it's a good tie. I think Plymouth are a great team. Um, I think their fans, if there's ever a time during the season Plymouth bring a big crowd, it will be the opening game. Their fans are passionate. They're always at me on Twitter in, in a good way and ask them what I think. They've got a good manager. They, their best player just signed a new contract yesterday, which hats off them for that. Um, I think it could be a, a 5-4 game. I think it could be a cracker. So um, I'm hoping our groundsman works, works the business and gets the pitch in good order. Um, I think we could have a bumper crowd. It's the, the only way we're going to get good crowds, and I, I won't moan about crowds anymore, is we have to win and we have to win well. And I'm going to say this to the players, the manager said it to the players, we have to embrace our fan base more. We have to be closer to them. We have to um, impress them. We have to thrill them. Um, we have to give them something they want to come and see. And I think we have to be high up the table all the time. Because even when we were sitting fifth and sixth last year, they weren't coming. So we really have to put out all the stops. They're a tough crowd to please. They're a tough public, you know. Um, that's the only way we will get back to the 7,000 plus crowds that we need at the ground. Um, so a lot of things on the plate this year to do. A lot of things to improve on. Um, and a lot, of, a, a lot of competitions to try and compete and win in, you know. Obviously, Owen John was at the uh, ABAX during the summer. That was obviously Brilliant. a success, and, and I guess now it's building on that. Brilliant, yeah. We got 14,000. I think we were like 1,000, 1,200 short of a sellout. Um, <clears throat> you learn every time you do something. Alex was the genius behind it. Alex, our commercial director, he's just been made a director along with um, uh, Liz and Dawn. So we got two new female directors of the club, and we've got Alex as well. They've been promoted from within. Um, and, and they're young and hungry, and they're vibrant, and they're going to do good things for the club. Alex um, brought that to the table over a year ago. He made it happen. Um, we've spoke about it. We're speaking to Live Nation and other people now about bigger commitments every year. We want to buy the ground. We want to be able to put it in a position where it can become a real concert venue for Peterborough, not just as a football club, because there's lots of people who aren't interested in football. They like other things. They like uh, sports. They will like music. They will like um, comedians. We want to do lots with the stadium. We've got this stadium costing us a lot of money every year. And we need to use it not just 20 odd times a year. We need to use it 52 weeks of the year. So Elton John was a real trial run. 
and it, and it was a, a raging success. Um, the safety officers did a brilliant job. There wasn't one complaint. People got in and out safely. They felt safe with everything going on in London. I was away on holiday. I was worried. You know, I didn't want to open up my Twitter feed and see news like that. And you're always a bit like, Phew. so for what the safety team did and everyone involved did, it was it was a real roaring success. I was so delighted with it, you know. And just finally, we've got a couple more days left in Spain. Sure. Um, what, what do you want to see from these uh, next few days? Goals, I guess, in goals in training. Yeah, I, I, to be honest with you, I just want to see the lads getting on. I want to see the, the camaraderie being built. I want to see what I'm seeing now with a new captain is getting everyone in order. I want to see everyone. I want to smell hunger. I said it last night. We said it. There's a smell. We can smell it again. There's a smell of hunger about the building. And there's a real smell of, of success in, in, in the making. And, and I, want, I want it all this season. To hell with people calling me the hype merchant and making promises. You know, I don't make promises. I reach for the stars. And if I fall a little bit short of the stars, that's okay with me. I want to win League One. I want to win the Checker Trade Trophy. I want seven to 8,000 fans as an average this season. I want two strikers competing for the Golden Boot. I want over 110 league goals. I want it all. Uh, I want us to turn our home form around. I want the country to stand up and talk about us again as a club like they used to. We've had a few years of stagnation. It's gone stale. Um, the theme for me now is, is rise. We rise again. Because since leaving the championship and getting in the playoffs and winning the JPT, we need to rise again to those standards and, and beyond. So for me, I want it all this year, yeah.